Welcome to our latest video. Uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to take our LCV two-seater commercial chimney and we're going to create a number of uh, installation guides showing you how to get started and the basics of modifying your chimney. On the right here, we've got our SZ5 passenger model. For those of you who follow our social media or keep an eye on our website, you'll be familiar with this car. It pretty much has most of our catalogue thrown at it wheels, suspension, interior, exterior, camping gear such as a roof rack. You really don't need to do all of this. Uh, for most people, just some very basic modifications will make your chimney much easier to live with, make it look fantastic, and you'll still have a great car without spending a fortune. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, we appreciate our website and our online catalogue can be a bit overwhelming if you're new to chimneys or new to modifying cars all together and there's so many parts on there sometimes we get a lot of people asking just where do i start so what we're going to do is we're going to take this lcv commercial chimney this is straight from the dealership with 18 miles on the clock and we're just going to run through the bare essentials to get a great looking chimney that also has some functional bits and pieces inside that makes your uh, daily chimney lifestyle that little bit more comfortable and a little bit more practical so let's get started so on the inside, this LCV commercial chimney is completely standard. You can see there, hasn't really gone any far, anywhere far. 18 miles on the clock. The standard, pretty rubbish head unit. All we've done is we've removed the centre partition. As you can see here, it's no longer in the back of the car. We've just done that to make filming a bit easier. Uh, some of the filming shots we want to get from the rear of the car would be... Uh, pretty rubbish if the partition grid was still in place. So we've pulled that out for the sake of this video, but otherwise everything in here is completely as you would find it straight from the dealership. So for our first round of interior modifications, we're going to use a selection of interior products that are among our most popular. Uh, I've chosen these because I feel these are the essentials inside the chimney. These are relatively inexpensive, but they give such a good improvement in everyday usability for the car. They improve storage, practicality, and it just makes the interior a much nicer place to be. So to start with, we've got a pair of these uh, drink or cup holders. These can be mounted either side of the dashboard or even to the door cards, which means you can choose to put them wherever suits you. In here, we've got the Jimmy style dashboard storage tray, which sits atop the dashboard as the name would suggest. And it's really useful for putting things like parking tickets, sunglasses, anything small, uh, long shaped like that, and that you need quick and easy access to. This is a perfect tool to help you do that. Over here, We've got the door grip storage pockets. Again, as the name would suggest, these fit to the door card and where there is a hollow handle at the moment, these provide a base that means you can use the pocket for things like your phone, uh, also sunglasses cases or anything else small that you need quick and easy access to. Over here, we've got the phone holder. Again, this is an essential. If you have a chimney that doesn't have the touchscreen head unit, so you'll be relying on your phone for sat nav, this is uh, a key piece of kit. It mounts the phone in an easy to view position. You can adjust it throughout a load of at various angles and positions, portrait, landscape, whatever you need, this phone holder can do it. And over here, we've got probably the most essential chimney uh, modification and the first thing any chimney owner should install. These are the rear defogger guards. These are designed to cover the exposed heater element wires on the rear windscreen and the amount of customers we've had call up and to tell us that their dogs have chewed through the wires or they've put a heavy shelving unit in the back or drawers or anything odd shaped and heavy and large uh, that slid around in the back and sliced through those wires it's quite an expensive job to replace them so these for relatively little outlay give you great peace of mind that you're not going to be breaking those anytime soon So the first things we're going to install are these rear defogger guards, as I just explained. Uh, these 
heater element wires for the heated rear windscreen are so exposed and they're so fragile. And as I said, we've had people call up and report that their dogs have chewed through these, or if you've got something heavy with uh, sharp or right angle ledges in the back of the car, you can just slice through these wires. And if you break these, it's quite a horrible job to replace them. So these rear defogger guards are just such a quick and easy solution. They stick in place and cover the wires up like that. And then once stuck down, they are rock solid and nothing is gonna get through there. Familiarize yourself with them. It's double sided tape on the back and just slide them around a bit till you get a feel for the position that they need to go in. You'll notice that the contour of the tailgate matches the contour of the defogger guards. So that's what you want to line them up with uh, to make sure that the tape sits properly. So just eyeball up where that's going to sit. So we'll peel these bits backing tape off. And then just carefully line it up. Make sure you're matching the shape of the tailgate, as we said, once it's in position. Just push down for a few seconds to make sure that the tape sits. Make sure all of the various corners are stuck down. It's a slightly different shape, it's smaller than that one on the left side. This goes in place just in the same uh, fashion. So again, just line it up with the tailgate. Make sure you position it nicely along the curvature of the metal. Once you're ready to go, just push down. Make sure all that tape sticks down onto the metal. And after a few seconds, it'll be nice and solid. And that's not moving anywhere. Job done. So this is another one of our most popular products. Uh, it's really popular because it's just incredibly simple and very useful. This is the dashboard storage tray. And it's designed to fit on here, on top of the dashboard. And once it's in place, you can use all of this storage for any small accessories you might have. The installation is really straightforward. It's fitted with all of this automotive double-sided tape on the back. If we just get rid of all of that. Now what you want to do when you're putting it in place, you can make use of this central plinth and just hold on to that. You want these curves here to match up with the curves on top of the rev counter and the speedo. And then these back corners, you want to match, match up with the curve at the back here. So if you get that nice and central, don't push down just yet. And make sure this back piece is going to line up perfectly with the dashboard so it can stick down which it is, and it's perfect on the other side as well. Once you're happy, just push down on all four corners, let the tape set, give it a few seconds. And there you go, it's nice and solid. And then you can finish it off by putting down these nice little black non-slip rubber mats. And then to show you how we would use the dashboard storage tray, things like sunglasses, you can pop just there. Maybe some headphones, you can just go there. And then if you want somewhere to put your phone, maybe you're parked up and you want to watch a film, you can just put it in there. And there you go, that's the dashboard storage tray installed and ready to go. So next up, we're going to install these drink holders. So these can be mounted in a variety of different positions, but for this one, we're going to put it here next to the steering wheel where it's easily accessible by the driver. These are super sturdy once bolted down. And the best thing about them is that this slider is adjustable. So you can mount anything in them from little Red Bull cans all the way to big coffee mugs and flasks. So the first thing we need to do is to remove this little trim piece. Uh, Suzuki put these novelty bolts across the dashboard and then with the drink holders, you get these Allen keys so you can easily just undo these. They're not even tightened down from factory. They're so loose. So you just give it a few turns and then if you get your forefinger and thumb on it, you can just about pull it out. And there you go. You can toss this aside, uh, keep it somewhere safe in case you want it in the future, but these are no longer needed once the drink holder is installed. And then the next job is removing this. So if you just get both your hands and with your thumbs, just give it a tug towards you and the clips pop out. 
and there you go. So we're going to put these sticky pads on these two tabs here. Just helps to stop the drink holder and this piece of trim from vibrating too much when you've got a heavy drink in place. So if you just line these up, these fit very nicely inside those slots. So it goes this way around. Once we've got these little sticky pads in place, we can just now clip this back into the dashboard, put the bottom in first and then just give it a nice solid shove. There you go, that's solidly back in place. Now with the drink holder, this has a pad of double-sided double sticky tape on the bottom of it. We've just taken off the backing tape on that. So what you want to do with this is we're going to be using this hole on the right-hand side of the dashboard. And then you want to grab the bolt and washer set that is included. That goes through that hole there. And then if you line this up, gradually with the dashboard. Just turn the bolt a few turns so that you know it's all going to line up nicely. Push the cup holder forward and then if you just push it down, give it a few seconds to let the tape set and now you can grab the allen key that is included and you can just tighten that up. You don't need to over tighten it because otherwise you'll end up breaking something. So as soon as you start to feel a bit of resistance, there you go, tight enough. Give it another quick push down to make sure that tape's set. There you go, it's nice and solid. Ready to take your drink. So another position where the drink holder can be mounted is here on the door handle. It can be done on either the left or the right hand door. We're showing it on the right hand door here. And for this, you need to use the middle hole. So the first step is to remove this novelty screw, novelty bolt that Suzuki have put in. Again, it's not in there too securely. So once you've turned it a few turns, there you go, it'll pop out. Now, a few things to note with the drink holder when putting it in this position. We're not gonna put it in this position permanently, so we'll leave the backing uh, paper on the tape there. But you will need the normal bolt, which goes through there. But on the rear, you will need this stepped collar piece that also comes in the drink holder kit. And you'll notice there's a little tab there, and that lines up with this tab on this collar. If you cut that into there and turn the drink holder around, put it into position, that collar ensures that it stays at the right angle on the door handle. Once so that's all in position, again, you can use a supplied Allen key, just tighten it up, not too tight. And there you go, that is ready to take a drink on the door card. So much like on the other side of the dashboard, we're gonna put this drink holder in place. Uh, on the left-hand side of the dashboard, you want to use this hole here. And the installation procedure is very similar to as it would be on the other side. The only difference is um, we're not going to use those little sticky pads on the tabs here, because that would mean taking the whole grab handle off. Uh, so we don't need to do that. So what we're going to do, just pull that little bolt out there. So we're just going to remove the backing tape from this double-sided tape here. If you grab the bolt, so like we're going to use this hole here. If you line it up with the dashboard, turn it a few threads just so you know you're at least on the right track with it. And once that's in, push the cup holder forward and then push down gently but firmly, just to make sure that tape sets. You can start to tighten the bolt using the supplied Allen key. Again, it doesn't need to be too tight. You don't need to break anything. Just push down, make sure that tape set. There you go, it's ready to be used. 
So installation of the door grip storage pocket on the other door is exactly the same as it is on the other side. Just make sure it's the right side, it follows a contour door grip. And another thing that we forgot to mention, it has this nice foam padded base on it, which stops things vibrating around when you're driving along. So same again, just remove these two screws. Don't go too crazy with them, because you don't want to round them off. To just get the door grip pocket in position. If you have a look down it, you'll see that the holes all line up. So just wait for it to purchase. There we are. Just do one of the screws loosely and then get the other one. And same again. Just make sure that purchases. There we go. No need to over tighten it. You don't want to break anything. There we go, you've now got a working door grip storage pocket. So last but not least, this is our final product in our, what we could call stage one or essential interior modifications to the Jimny. This is the adjustable phone holder. As you can see, it's got these arms here to hold your phone in place and this base at the bottom so you can use all different shapes and sizes of phones has this uniball mount on the back, which means when it's all assembled, you can rotate it around however you like, whether you're, you prefer your phone uh, in portrait or landscape mode. And once the arm is installed on the back, you can move this up and down, depending on how you want to view it from the driver's or passenger seat. To begin with, use a supplied Allen key and you remove this novelty bolt here. Again, just like all the other parts that we've installed, these aren't particularly tight. There we go, we can chuck that to one side now. And the first piece we need to install is this U-shaped piece that comes with a phone holder. This side with the hole goes on the top. And then we just need to line that up with the hole on the dashboard. Push that into place. And then with the supplied bolt, push that in there. Tighten it up with the Allen key. Again, you don't want to over tighten it because then you'll break one of the plastic pieces. Just make sure as soon as it starts getting firm, that'll do. No need to tighten it up any more than that. And the next thing is this little U shaped piece, this side with the hole faces upwards and you push it into place like that. Next, you want the main arm of the phone holder. Now this raised side here, as you can see there, it's slightly deeper. This uh, faces downwards onto the phone mount here. So you put that in position there and then you grab a threaded adjustable knob. So uh, next thing you can do is if you loosen this knob here, you can see that the arm moves up and down. And if you loosen this knob here, this uniball also loosens. And this uniball is what goes into the back of the phone. So if we get that in position there. So before the next stage, we just want to nip up these bits here because we're going to be putting a bit of force on the phone holder on this uniball. So we don't want these flying around. If we grab the main phone, phone holder unit, just loosen this nut on the back, not all the way off, but just so that there's no tension on this mount here. Then you want to line it up with this uniball, give it a firm push and it will click into place. And then you want to tighten up this nut on the back. Again, not crazy tight, but just enough to secure the phone holder in place. And next, all you need to do is just, you can loosen everything off again and adjust it to the position that suits you. So personally, I find that if we turn this 
to the left so it faces the driver on this right hand drive car and then on this one have that all the way down and then we can have the phone pointing up and you just tighten this one here now what you want to do is just check how big your phone is going to be on here if you've got a really tall phone you might want to lower this bottom base and there's a little adjustment knob on the back if you loosen that that allows that to go up and down for most phones you should find that the uh, this default position is best so just make sure that knob on the back is tight but not too tight and then if you want to adjust the grips because your phone probably won't go in to begin with there's a little button on the side here where my finger is pointing to if you press that the grips will release you can put your phone in place and then just grab the grips uh, and there you go the phone is now solidly in position the beauty of this phone holder is that it's fully adjustable so if you loosen the nut on the back you can turn your phone through 90 degrees so if you wanted to watch something in landscape you can do you've still got the charger connection there you can turn it all the way around this way as well if you wish and then you can adjust these arms on the back however you want so that if you want to put it up here for whatever reason you can do you just tighten those up once you're happy with the placement there's a cutout on the bottom for your charger cable so you can charge it while you're driving and then when you want to take it out just quickly press the button and away you go so now that we've tackled the interior we're going to make a few basic exterior modifications as you might have seen on our shop you can go pretty crazy with altering the Jimny's exterior anything from full conversion body kits spoilers leds roof racks, all sorts of various options. But today we're just going to deal with the essentials. These are nice and easy things that you can do at home. They're quite affordable and they make a big difference to the look of your chimney. So the first two items we're going to use are our retro grill and our LED front indicators. So this will replace this Suzuki grill here. As you can see, the texture of our retro grill is pretty much exactly the same. This is completely unpainted straight out of the box. Uh, so you can fit it to the car without painting anything. And then these LED indicators, uh, we've chosen the clear version. We also have smoked and amber versions, and these will replace these quite 80s looking irregular amber indicators here. So we're gonna start by removing the standard grill first. Then the first things we're going to do is unplug these indicators. If you reach around the back, you'll find the plugs for these down here. And you just simply unclip it like so. I just want to remove the plug on this side too. Just tucked in this corner, just pull it away. And next thing we need to do is deal with these two pop clips on here. If you're gentle, you can use a very small flathead screwdriver. I'm just going to use this trim removal tool. Pop the clip out and do the same again on this side as well. And next up are these two clips on either side of the grill. These are really weird because you don't loosen them like a traditional screw or bolt. You just need to turn them 90 degrees anti-clockwise and that releases the clip. So you want a really sharp screwdriver. If you push in and then turn the clip by 90 degrees, you'll see that's released it. That has now released that clip as well. So you want to be really careful with these. Don't use a blunt screwdriver because you will just round them off and then you'll be stuck. With those loosened, all we need to do now is pop all the clips off. We don't need to do anything with the headlights. These stay fixed to the car. If you get your fingers under the grill here, you can give it a nice firm tug. 
that will release some of the clips and you just want to work around the grill gently but firmly and then with all the clips unpopped just gently pull the grill away watch out for these brackets make sure they don't get caught up there and there we go we can now put this safely to one side and replace it So these are the two grills side by side. This is a new retro grill. This is the original Suzuki grill. You can leave everything in place on this, apart from we need to borrow the screws from this indicator. So with your Phillips head screwdriver, just carefully remove these. When you're working with these front grills, it's essential that you do so on like a piece of cardboard or a soft floor because otherwise you will scratch up the face of the grill and ruin it before you even get a chance to put it on the car. So with the indicators removed, we can now put this grill to one side, and start working on the new retro grill. For the orientation on these, RH is right hand, and then just line it up the mounting holes there. Again, if you've got it the wrong way round, the holes won't line up. Let's just turn it the other way up, and there you go. It falls nicely into place. So you're going to need the screws that you removed from the original indicators, and then in the fitting kit that we supply, you'll get these washers. For the top hole on the indicator, you want one screw and one washer. For the bottom hole, you want one screw and three washers. So we'll use this one for the top. Make sure you have the correct size screwdriver for the job. You don't want to round off or mash up the screw heads. So on this one, as we said, three washers. Pop it in there. don't want to over tighten these because they are going into a plastic grill but you want them just tight enough so that the indicator is not going to wobble around it's completely secure on the grill now so also included with the led indicators are these electrical resistors you have to use these uh, because if you don't fit them the led indicators will what's called hyper flash when they're active and that means they'll blink far too fast so all you do with these as you'll notice on the led indicators there's a little two pin plug here you get the little two pin connector from the resistor connect that like so just peel off the backing tape here and then you want to put this on the bottom of the indicator find this nice nice flat surface here push it into place and then just hold it down for a few seconds and the tape will set there you go that's in place and we'll repeat that on the other side indicator as well So the next thing we need to install are these brackets, which do the job of these ones that you can see on the standard grill. So these go into place here, just like that. So we're going to use one of these screws that's supplied with the retro grill. Just put the bracket in place, pop the screw in, get the screwdriver, start to tighten that up too tight just enough so that it's held solidly in position and then same on the other side if you get your bracket pop it into position there screw in your screwdriver just enough to keep the bracket secure the last step is these clips 
that you will have got in the fitting kit with the retro grill. Now these copy the clips on the original grill and they go into these slots. All you do is you have these multiple layers here and where the opening is, you just slide that into position on the grill like so. And you're gonna repeat this for all of the various slots where there is an opening for these plastic clips. Now, a question we get commonly asked is what to do with these plugs, because if you install the grill as it is now like this, these plugs won't match up with the connectors that you are left with on the car. What you need to do, and you absolutely need to do this before putting the new retro grill on the car, is you need to remove these connectors from the original front indicators. These have the original bulb in. You need to pull the original bulb out. And now this is the connector that you can use to connect the LED front indicator to. Push that into position. This will connect to the connector on your car. And with that connected, just push those wires in there. Make sure that these tabs correspond to the holes and the slots in the back of the indicator because they're all slightly different. Slide that in there. Give it a little push. And then turn it to lock it. That ensures a waterproof seal. So now we need to do that on the other side of the grill and then it's ready to go onto the car. So if you just line up these top brackets to make sure that they go into the holes that they need and then try and make sure that the cables behind the indicators aren't getting caught up in anything. And once you're happy that this is lined up, you can start to push in some of these clips along the top. Just make sure that they have a corresponding hole. And give it a bit of a shove. There we go. So those three are now in place. And if you come up here, you'll notice that the brackets are almost in place, ready for the clips to go in. So we now just need to go around the grill, slowly but surely pushing in the various plastic clips. Once you're happy that the grill is all secure and back in place, we can pop these clips back in. So these just go in there and then push down. When you're doing it, make sure that the head of the clip is fully all the way out and it's not halfway pushed in or anything like that because that will just make it more difficult to insert. So you just push it in there, push down, and then we need to come to these last two clips at the front. And as before with these little square clips here, you just want to turn them through 90 degrees. So push it down, turn it 90 degrees, there go, and that's now locked in place. Now with the grill in place, we can connect the indicator plug onto the back of the indicator. Just push it into place, and once it clips, that's all you need to do. And of course, just repeat it on the other side get the clip and connect it to the back of the other indicator. So before you close the bonnet and put your tools away, just put your hazard lights on and make sure that the indicators are working as expected. Is we're going to replace these very vintage looking side markers not particularly great they're not particularly visible in bad conditions so we're going to replace it with this led version this is the clear version we also have a smoked version available and these are probably one of the easiest things to install let's push the original side marker a bit forward and put your finger behind the back and it will start to come out like so you take note that the big clip is on the front edge so we just need to undo this electrical plug, like so. 
just as a quick side note when fitting these side markers, this little rubber seal should be inside that plug. When you remove the original side marker, sometimes these uh, fall out. So just make sure if it does come out, you put it back in before connecting the LED side marker. It should go in with these little sharp prongs facing downwards into the connector. Connect the replacement side marker and then with that big clip on the front, push it back into position and there you go. So it's the same again on the other side, push it to the side slightly, get your fingers behind it and pull it out. The clip is on the rear on this side, undo the electrical connection, connect the new side marker. So, big clip on the rear again, there we go. So we've now got the retro grill installed, we've also got the LED front indicators, but there's one little thing we need to do just to finish up this front end, and that is the Suzuki vintage emblem. Now this is an original, genuine Suzuki part, we hold in stock and these are such a good addition just to finish off this retro grill and give it a nice vintage aesthetic um, the emblem isn't really designed for any specific part of the car but we found that they can be used really quite effectively with this front grill which you'll have also seen on our SF5 we have the uh, emblem on there on the front it's been on there a long time now it's one of the uh, highlights of the front of the car in my opinion Installing the emblem is really quite straightforward as long as you follow a few simple tips and tricks. So the emblem is held in place with automotive grade double-sided tape, which is used a lot more commonly in the automotive industry than you might think, including on brand new cars to hold various pieces of trim together. The tape is already pre-cut and pre-installed, so you don't need to worry about getting it perfectly cut to match these quite intricate curves and shapes. Now the emblem is going to stick along these central pieces here in the middle of the grill so ideally you want to stick the emblem onto the grill as soon as you've installed it because in order for the tape to stick as securely as possible this needs to be completely clean uh, this area that the emblem is going to stick onto needs to be completely dry and grease free so if you have been driving around with the grill on for a bit give it a good wash uh, make sure it's dry and also if you can degrease it to make sure there's nothing on there that's going to stop the tape from setting correctly. So the emblem is supplied on this cardboard backing which is designed to help you line it up if you're not particularly sure where you're going to install it but because we know exactly where it's going to go on the retro grill it's not particularly necessary. So all you need to do is just carefully peel away this cardboard layer. And you will be left with a vintage emblem ready to go. So the first time we installed one of these, we did have to do quite a bit of measuring to figure out where was the best place to put it, uh, to centralize it and make sure it looked nice and even. Uh, but we've done quite a few of these now, so we can tell you exactly where it needs to go. You need to find this section here, so it is exactly in the middle uh, in this direction and it's also the middle row in the horizontal direction and that lines up perfectly with this flat section here between the Z and the U on the emblem. So you want this straight tape strip to go along this straight section here and then you want the Z and the U to go either side of this little bit here when you're ready to go with the installation, you just need to carefully remove the uh, backing tape. Make sure not to stick your fingers in any of the tape because it will ruin the adhesive properties. And then just carefully line it up on this central piece that we just pointed out. Make sure the curve of the Z is just to the left of this corner here. You just push down the central bit, take a step back, 
make sure it all looks okay. When you're happy with it, gradually go across from the center and stick down the other pieces that have a plastic uh, section of grill to stick to. If you're worried if it's not straight or not, just make sure that the straight lines on the emblem run parallel with the straight lines across the grill. So just gently push down on all the sections that you can and then leave the emblem alone. Ideally, you want to not drive the car for a few hours. Uh, definitely don't get the grill wet or dirty for a few hours. Just let the tape stick. Uh, it will get stickier and stickier and the adhesive chemicals will set properly. A lot of people ask us uh, about this installation. They can't really believe that the tape is strong enough to hold the emblem in place. This emblem has been on this particular retro grill for well over a year now, I'd say about 18 months. It's been through high heat, it's been through snow, ice, floods, torrential rain, and it's still completely solid on there, this section. It's not even stuck to anything because it relies on these two pieces here. But you see, the emblem is not coming off anytime soon unless you really, really wanted it to come off. Bad weather is not going to get that to come off. So that's the front end dealt with now. Uh, I think you'll agree for just a few simple, straightforward modifications. We've completely transformed the look of the LCV commercial chimney without going too overboard. We've not made any permanent modifications. These are all quite straightforward DIY uh, installation processes for a completely different look to the front of the car. Uh, so now we're going to spin the car around, take a look at the rear, and we're just going to add one finishing touch back there. going to add one last finishing touch to the rear of our LCV commercial chimney and that is our LED tail lights. These make such a difference to the back of the chimney. Uh, they completely transform the way it looks and the lights are just so much brighter and more visible than the standard units which are pretty dated to be honest. If you live in a part of the world where you have a rear fog light like we do here in the UK the lights are also not symmetrical left to right which uh, can really bug some people, myself included. It's much nicer to have an identical set of rear lights, They're much brighter, easier for other road users to see. And uh, in my opinion, they just look so much better. If you have a look through some of our older videos on our YouTube channel, you'll uh, see that we already did an installation guide for these LED tail lights a couple of years ago. Uh, the installation is exactly the same as it was back then, uh, with one key difference on the LCV commercial model, and that's what we're going to show you today. So the key difference when installing the LED tail lights on a commercial LCV or SZ4 model is this electrical resistor that you will require to complete the installation. The reason for this being is that the LCV commercial and the SZ4 have halogen headlights, whereas the SZ5 has LED headlights. As a result of those halogen headlights, if you connect our LED tail lights, you can sometimes cause an error message on the dashboard. You'll get the traction control warning and a few other warning lights on there as well. This electrical resistor cures all of that, so it's essential to install it if you have one of those SZ4 or one of these LCV commercial models. Now the resistor needs to be installed on the reverse light wires. If you're not sure which ones these are, take a look at your original tail light. This first light here as this model is a right hand drive version it has a fog light on this side so you don't want to touch that you just need to put the resistor on the wires for this reverse light which is these two wires here if you have a left hand drive car with a rear fog light so for example you live in France or Germany somewhere like that 
your reverse light will be on this side instead of the fog light. The fog light will be on the other side. So therefore you would need to connect the resistor on this side. But as this is a right hand drive car with a rear fog light, UK specification, the reverse light is here. So in true Jimny style fashion, as soon as we started filming this tutorial for you, it started chucking it down outside. So we've come into the warehouse now just to finish it off. If you have something plastic and quite blunt, like a trim removal tool, I would advise just using this to just push down the wire to make sure it properly clamps onto the metal piece inside this lock and to ensure that it makes a good electrical connection. And once you close the lock, you should hear it click and these little hinges on the side will go flat. That means it's properly sealed, it's locked in place and it should be making a good electrical connection inside there. Same again, if you take something blunt and plastic just to push this wire down and make sure it properly grips into place on the little connector. That should be nice and solid now. And once again, just close the lock, give it a squeeze, it should clip into place and hold the wire securely. Now that the resistor is connected to the reverse light wires, you need to tuck it somewhere out of sight because once the tail light is installed, there is no space in this area for the resistor. So if you duck down and have a look under here, there is a hole in the bumper that the resistor can be fed through. You can just tuck it back there, but personally, I would advise uh, removing this film, uh, the backing tape on the double-sided tape that is connected to the resistor. And then you can thread it through the hole back here and stick it on the inside of the bumper. So this is the best place to mount the resistor. This is on the inside of the rear bumper. You can see this section here is the part of the molding that the tail light goes into on the other side of the bumper. So we fed the resistor through the hole at the top and then using the pre-fitted double-sided tape, we've stuck it onto the inside of the rear bumper. Hold it down for a bit to make sure the tape sets. And it'll be nice and solid and secure in that position. Once the electrical resistor is in place on the reverse light wires, it's now time to carry on with the tail light install as normal. As I mentioned before, we do have a much more comprehensive tail light install guide on our YouTube channel. Uh, I will put the link on the screen now. So now we can open up a nice new box of tail lights and crack on with the installation.
and you can see everything installed and working perfectly on the LCV commercial. Tail lights have completely transformed the back end of the car, a much more modern look and thanks to the installation of the electrical resistor, there are no warning lights on the dashboard about the lighting system, which is good. So that completes stage one of the modifications to our LCV commercial chimney. All of these modifications were the sort of jobs you can do at home using basic tools and without breaking the bank. We've spent a few hundred pounds on getting to this stage, but in the process we've managed to make the chimney look a bit cooler and we've also improved practicality and day-to-day -day usability on the interior. So just to recap, up front we fitted the retro grille with the vintage emblem. We also fitted the clear front indicators and the clear side markers, both of those being LED. Over at the rear, we also fitted our LED tail lights. And on the inside, we fitted a few various accessories, such as the door grip storage pockets, a pair of the drink holders, the phone holder, and the dashboard storage tray. So in the next round of modifications, we'll start to get a bit more advanced. We'll do a few more bits and pieces on the interior, such as the armrests. And on the exterior, we'll take things a bit further. There are a few other components we can install. Also, a set of wheels and tyres to really get this chimney looking nice and aggressive. So thank you very much for watching and keep an eye out for the next episode.